your chalice, your mug. Fill it with your favorite liquid. I like Russian tea, apparently. We're out of coffee. The coffee maker broke. <laughs> Again. Yeah, you can join me for the simultaneous sip. Mm. Hot. So today, Hot. we're going to be talking about math-based projects. Yep. And math-based projects this is one of my favorite topics because oh. math is one of those subjects that oftentimes you'll hear people say, oh, well, you can't apply project-based learning to math. You know, you just have to go and do all these math equations. And, and drilling is important, but you can do math-based projects. And that's the whole point why you're learning math, though. What they don't get is, like, the reason why kids are drilling the fundamentals of math in school is so that they can eventually apply it to real-world things, which is essentially project-based learning, at least the way that we do it. Right? Yeah. Yep. So, and we've got a great example today that we're going to work through based on Isla's business Positive um, thing we could also talk about is different project ideas. One thing I linked in the description is the mathematics demo day that we did uh, last year. Oh yeah, with Stacy joining, and we had a few projects on, like for example, I did a project on utility functions. Where oh yeah, that was, was really cool. Yeah, where it was basically a mathematical function to calculate happiness. And what it was essentially representing is different strategies that you can use to go about increasing your happiness. So there were different variables, such as how much of like a thing that makes you happy that you do, such as like um, playing an hour with your friends or eating a cookie. And it's basically <laughs> like that's, that's one type of variable. Uh, there's two variables that relate to that, things that you do that um, make you happy that are good for you and things that you do that make you happy that are bad for you. And then there's also... An yeah. So just so you don't lose people, this is an equation. Yeah, this is an equation. U equals yeah. number of cookies times some factor that would relate the number of cookies you eat to how happy you are. And then there would be, you know, plus um, uh, hours with friends times another factor that translates yeah. how much fun you derive from spending an hour with your friends. So you yeah. build an equation. She built an yeah. equation. So it's basically how much you do of something that makes you happy, that is also good for you, times how much happiness you gain from this, plus um, how much you do of something that makes you happy, that um is bad for you times the num uh, the amount of happiness you gain from that plus your baseline happiness and so basically the three strategies were one increase just the amount of things you do that make you happy whether that's just spending more time with your friends eating more cookies right that would be the strategy but that's not necessarily that's kind of the way I think a lot of people. Think that's how a lot of people think. I, about I want it. more stuff. It makes me more happy. So yeah. add more cookies means more happy. Um, and that's, I mean, that's like the easiest. Relationship. Yeah, that's like the easiest strategy because it's kind of what you're naturally inclined to do. Um, but it can also be bad because you're also doing things like eating cookies, which is bad for you in the long term. Mm -hmm. Going into all three, I think they should go to the project. Sure. Because yeah. you're going to lose a lot of folks. Sure. It's a cool project. So, but the point is that <coughs> by having the math function, you can make it, um, you can have like a, a structure to communicate these concepts that would otherwise be harder to try to communicate to yeah. other people. Uh, yeah. All right. I want to do an example with Isla. Sure. And give you a chance if you need to, to blow your nose. Because okay. Sume is so sick and it's so sad. And she had her bloody nose this morning too. All right. So one of my favorite mathematics projects that I did with my kids was one that tried to predict <laughs> whether or not they were going to what? Pee. Yeah. Whether or not like they are going to pee. Like on the road trip. Like every hour. It was like, okay, here's your inputs. Do you remember the inputs to that function? So the probability of going pee in the next hour was what you're trying to predict. How much food you'd had in the last, how much food you'd had and how much water you drank in the last six hours or something. And also. 
Were you awake? Right. That was another one, right? Because you and Sume don't wet the bed anymore. Uh -huh. When you were little babies, you uh -huh. know, like little babies <laughs> do. But it was like, like whether or not one is potty trained. Maybe also how old you are. Yeah, how old you? Oh yeah, that was one of them. There right. was an adjustment because if you drink also, like a lot of like, what is a lot of fluid? Yeah. For Isla, if she drinks like this much fluid, that's a lot. She's going potty soon. Yeah. You know, but if I drink this much fluid, I can keep going. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't have like so. It, you so can anyway, hold it in. but it was a really useful way to actually start showing my kids a uh, how to use math. And then we also used math a lot when we were designing a uh, castle in Minecraft that had the same dimensions as the Week Will School logo. Yeah. And I remember you guys all were like, uh, especially Sume, you were trying to figure out the math for like how far apart to put the towers. Yeah. And it was like, I had just done all this geometry. Why is this so hard? <laughs> and uh, and Aaron was with us at the time. Mm -hmm. So so those were all ways. Oh, oh, another one was when we did our plant-based meat article. Oh, yeah. We got all this data. And we were plotting out all this data into these graphs mm -hmm. and using that to try to um, basically displaying that data, but then coming up with lots of different metrics like, what percent of people thought that plant-based meat was better than uh, real meat during the first hour versus the second hour and all these percentages, Yeah. right? So that was one. Um, what was another one? Um, well, there's tons. Yeah. Uh-huh. Also, like, doing statistics on, and gathering data about something that you care about um, especially this is very much like applicable to kids where they can, if they're interested in something, then they can just like, like conduct surveys with people, with their friends and like people in their neighborhood <laughs> and then do statistics, <laughs> statistics, also measuring different demographics. Like if you're older or younger and learning about like the mean, median, mode, all those types of things. I always thought those and, were so cool. Yeah. When I started displaying statistics, when I saw that for the first time, right? I think I was like nine Also, or 10. yeah, putting it in Google Sheets, actually making charts so you can visualize it. A little nine, 10 oh, year yeah. old daddy <laughs> boy. And I was outside with a baseball bat hitting this little wiffle ball. And oh. then I would walk the number of paces to, to pick up my little wiffle ball. And then I would write down the number of paces on a piece of paper. And then I, I went back in the house and I did not get good grades. Like I was like, this is like one of the frustrating things because I would do things like that. And I was learning, man. I was like, this is so cool. And then I was like drawing these, his I kind of invented the histogram by myself before I knew what a histogram was. I was like, wow, I can make a column for this. And then look, most of the time I'm like, getting this, I should probably come up with a word for what that is, the column that was the biggest. I didn't realize that the biggest column was the was the mode, right? Is it the mode? Mm -hmm. The one that has the highest frequency? Oh, um, no, I'm I think it was like the average. No, there's the average. That's not the- That's not the biggest yeah, one. The biggest one. I think it, we'll have to check it and put yeah. it in the description later. Um, but then there was like, I had this outlier where I like smacked it so far. Uh -huh. And I was like, wow, that is so out there it's like an outlying piece of data you know and i didn't realize that there's a name for it. it's called an outlier and then later on in my life my career it was like a lot of statistics and machine learning um but uh yeah it was really cool it was like applying math and then i'd go into math class <laughs> and it was just so rough um but uh later on i realized that math really was a, a language it's yeah. a language for uh, describing um, objective relations between, you know, measurable um, outcomes and measurable relationships. Yeah, right? one thing in school, I was talking uh, to mommy about this, but it was uh, about like some of the stuff that I was doing in algebra one and algebra two. And I was like, this should be taught alongside statistics in school. 
because then you can actually be seeing the um, the relevance of all these like charts and parabolas and linear equations and stuff that you're doing. Like to if if that was even just like taught alongside statistics, even if it wasn't incorporated, you could at least kind of have those two concepts. Why side am by I side. seeing these relationships? Yeah. What is this yeah. polynomial? What? Yeah. And <laughs> you can actually at least be able to be like, here's how you actually apply these things. Instead of A lot of kids probably see those and just think it's roller coasters. Right. Yeah. But that's not really the right like actually yeah. earlier you were, and we'll get to the dog project shortly. Yeah. You created a nonlinear relationship. Yeah. And then graphed it out. Yeah. <laughs> and it was cool. It was like, wow, that's complicated. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I but, think that uh, that is also, it's just um, a lot of, it's like a parabola. A lot of the examples in Khan Academy was just like somebody throwing a ball or something. You know, you do that in uh um physics but then it's also like optimizing the price of your product right, right. or you can if it's too this is your uh, this is your price yeah and then this is your revenue yeah because you have a revenue curve yeah because if you make your price too high then people don't want to buy it so then they're buying less of your product if you make your price too low then you're not actually you'll get zero it. sales if you try to sell your your lemonade cup for a million dollars. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. And so there's that sweet spot in there. Uh -huh. And you also, you probably want to have like the profit curve because the more right. lemonade you sell, the more it's going to cost you too. Right. So you have this profit curve. Yeah. And then you can so actually. Profit and price. Yeah. There's a point at uh -huh. which you maximize it. And, that, and then it's like, that's called the vertex. And if people don't understand, and then there's all these equations in which you can just like derive the vertex from limited information right and if you don't actually like understand these real world applications then you're just like what's the point of like if right. i throw a ball why Ooh. do i need to know like, Ooh, another one another one i can give you another uh -huh. next break if sure. you need it yeah she's so cute sorry anytime my babies are sick it's just rough even if they're running companies they're <laughs> still adorable um so another example that i had when i was a kid that made me like made math come to life was Dungeons and Dragons. I was reading the player's handbook and for the first time in my life, I saw a normal distribution. Sorry. For the first <laughs> time in forever, I saw a normal distribution. It was so elegantly beautiful. And I created it by rolling three six-sided die. It was so cool. All right. Anyway, <laughs> it was cool because like, okay, so you roll one die and the distribution of outcomes is pretty boring. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. Call that a uniform distribution. Mm -hmm. Then you roll two die. Right? Yeah. And what do you get? Well, normal distribution. No. Oh. With two you get like this pyramid distribution. Yeah. So like there's one outcome. Oh, there's only okay. one way you can get two. Right. Snake eyes. Yeah. There's only one way you can get 12. And that's with two sixes, two sixes. right? But how many different ways can you get a three? Um, or an 11? Yeah. There's two. two. Yeah. You know, one can be five, one can be six on the 11 side, yeah. or it can be the other way. Yeah. Right. Which and then, and then the how most... many, how many ways can you get four? Um, you can get it, can get it. How many ways? Two, one, one, two, two, two. two. Wait, no, 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 that's not. Three, one. Three, one. Three, one, one three, 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 two, two. Two, two. Yeah. So there's three. So yeah. it builds this little pyramid. And yeah. then it's a direct, it's, like it's not seven. a normal distribution. Right. Normal distribution looks like this. Yeah. Right? It's kind what of rounding seven? right over the top of my head, just right over my bald head. Right? Mm -hmm. So as soon as you switch to three die, it becomes a normal, dis it like looks right. like a normal distribution. Yeah. It's really cool. It transforms and it's like, whoa, uh -huh. that's so much cooler. Yeah. And I saw that in the player's handbook because that's how you play D&D. &D. You start out by making your character and you have th six different attributes and you right. roll three six-sided die 
you fill in those numbers and it is the right, it's the simplest, but probably best way or simplest best way. There's no best way, but it was yeah. a simple way to create what is often observed in real life, right. which is a normal distribution of outcomes. Uh -huh. You take like height. Yeah. Right. What's or even one? like, even just, um, if, for example, with the idea of certain attributes, like certain skills that you have, it's generally the case where people might have like an average competency with a skill, but then there's also experts in the field and then it's kind of like a right. distribution. Right. It's like most people that kind of like, for example, with history, because in school, most people like learn a learn at least some things about different types of history and they kind of there might be like the average right. amount of knowledge some people like just did not pay attention at all and then yeah. there's like a tiny bit of people who know like zero right. about history well there might be so so charisma is one of these right right yeah so most people are kind of in the middle of the charisma bell curve that's yeah. another way of, of referring to the the normal distribution of bell curve yeah um and yeah most people are normal yeah. in the middle you know, that's kind of the definition, kind of the definition of right? Normal. And then you've got some people that are just not. Yeah. You know, and you get some people that life of the party. Yeah. But they're these more outlying outcomes, right? Yeah. And so it was just another <coughs> way of bringing. All, I also used to play a game with you girls. Now I'm remembering all of these other projects. Uh -huh. We used to play a game where we would roll the dice. And it was three of these dice. Actually, I usually use two, but sometimes I would use three. Uh -huh. And you would pick a number for your horse. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, made, and, made oh, the, and it was rough shot. because because like Sume kind of got the normal distribution thing, right. and so she would be picking. Are guess what number you'd be picking seven? on three? Well, if we had if okay, yeah, that's right. Dice, yeah. When we had two dice, I would do like. I would do like six, seven, eight, or like five, six, seven. And then Isla, like the first time she came in, she's like, ooh, I'll do two. <laughs> and it's Daddy like, like me. <laughs> no. And so I'd be whispering, it's like, you should go for seven. You know, like a seven has the most ways yeah. of getting yeah. a hit, yeah. right? You can do one and six, two and five, three and four, four and three, five and two, <laughs> six and one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know? So then, we would have these races and mm -hmm. it was uh and you guys were mesmerized like it was really fun yeah you know um what are some other ones well i i, I bring it into board games that we play so oh, we'd be playing like do uh, monopoly with debt oh yeah taught or... taught my kids credit uh -huh. by adding a central banker or you who controlled money. the interest rate yeah. And the kids could borrow money. And then sometimes you'd be like, there's inflation. And now we're going to raise the interest rate. Yeah. <laughs> and then it was like, yeah. Yeah. And then you guys would get you, Generally, you would do that because Isla and I would not want to um, borrow money because they're like, it's too risky. And then you would borrow a bunch of money. And then I would to, do it. And then to... And then to make it so that it would be easier for us to win, you would raise the interest rate on yourself. That's how I would, I would, yeah. yeah. I would kill my my player off with yeah. higher interest rates, kind of like the Fed's doing now. Yeah. See, it's useful. It's relevant. <laughs> um, we would make up games. Happy time with Project Based Math. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, what are some other? Oh, I, I remember one time we had a Nerf gun. And well, actually, we have lots of nerfs. Yeah, in fact, it's one of the few things that we save from the fire. Yeah. You did? Sume put it inside of a giant. Remember, I organized the tool bin. room like two oh, days yeah. before the fire. It's one I... of the few things that we still have. Yeah. Um, we should have a nerf gun fight. So I had this like, uh, we had like a some kind of a target, mm -hmm. and there were 10 bullets in the gun. Yeah. And then we would shoot, actually, I think we were shooting Barbies. Yeah, to be if I'm gonna be true to true to the story, we had like I, I don't know at some point I think that you guys switched from viewing Barbies as the thing you play with to viewing Barbies as like target practice for yeah. your nerve gun. <laughs> so we had our we had them set up and you would shoot and then we would calculate out the percent accuracy rate. Right. Um, I probably should have had a disclaimer before sharing. <laughs> Sorry, this is a. Uh, 
Sometimes, sometimes the the ways that I would engage my kids on something would. We had plastic cups. Yeah, it was actually plastic cups. Okay. Yeah, plastic um, cups. So. Enjoy your Barbies. I'd say the most important <laughs> thing. The most important thing is that, like, you're finding ways to really engage your kids in using math. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. Actually, now with shopping, with cooking. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure you're looking at like. I do a lot of. Um... Because it's not only about um, how much the actual ingredients cost for each dish, but it's also like if I buy a sack of flour, I'm not using the entire sack of flour. So I can cop. Uh, so one, I have to calculate like the raw cost of the only the flour that I use for the yeah. dish, right? And then you also consider this is kind of more like a long term pantry investment of like now i have this shelf stable ingredient that i can be using throughout a lot of dishes right? shelf stable ingredient yeah so that's that's You're a case such a foodie that's the yeah. case with a lot of like spices and then things like flour and um and like canned foods or if you can like buy it in bulk then you're also making a long-term investment and so that's also kind of like related to math right right yeah yep that's true um well we might uh ooh, ooh, another one and then maybe we could get to the <laughs> to the pricing sure. thing for yeah. the so i remember showing sume for the first time and i did the same thing for you yeah you, <coughs> you both had the same reaction to spreadsheets and colors oh, <laughs> yeah conditional formatting uh-huh it was just like for the first time in forever, I am visualizing math. And it was just the colors, children. And you could see the, lo the little colors or the little numbers were green and the big numbers were red. And I created this multiplication table, one to nine, you know, with 81 on the corner. We've all seen oh, this so many times. Yeah. And you saw it going from this bright green to this dark red and you're just sort of like, I can feel that, Daddy. I can feel it. And it was so cute. Yeah. And then we did random numbers. You loved. Sume got really into random numbers. Sume spent about two hours once just playing around with random numbers. I did? Yeah. Because you would hit oh. enter. Every time you'd hit uh, enter, yeah. it would redistribute it. And, and, so and then the colors would change. The colors would change. And it yeah. was like we created like a thousand numbers uh -huh. and then from that we would make a distribution um and then we would compare that distribution to what the actual underlying function was so right. i created something that was the equivalent of rolling three sixes right and then it would show the histogram and it was close to a normal distribution right each time yeah. you would hit enter and it would rebuild it yeah rebuild it but sometimes it's a little bit off. It, and like and shit woo -woo -woo, and you know, and it was just like. Which also gives you. Real. <laughs> so it makes you kind of think about like, even though that most things have a normal distribution, in some cases, um, you just have like a really weird circumstance. Right. Some cases you come into a party and like eight out of 10 people are extroverted and like the charisma is like, is like all the, <laughs> all the charts for, and it's like a weird chart in some circumstances, but it's kind of just like, it also makes you kind of question some data that you see where it's like, well, you know, in most cases, this is generally the case, but in some specific mm. examples, ahead, it might be um, more different. Mm. So, so how about you two pull up your spreadsheet oh, okay. and just talk about it a little bit. And then once you guys are done talking about your spreadsheet, then we can be done. Okay. 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 Um, okay. So basically what um, we were doing is. I can that to say. Okay, sure. Yeah. Yeah. So we, um, we, I, since I wanted to, um, uh, well, we need to set the price for positive pooch sitting, right, for the dog sitting. So Isla has a dog sitting business. But we were getting requests of somebody who's like, well, 
I have a turtle that needs to be fed, and so but it doesn't to, need walks. But it doesn't need walks, obviously. Cause and it's I have a turtle, this dog. and it needs to have a bath. And then I also have a cat, where all you have to do is just like open a can of cat food. Also, there's like. There's different types of dogs. There's yeah, super... there's there's Bella, who's <laughs> like super easy, um, super sweet. Yeah, and then there's like Lily, who's it's this gigantic, dog. really energetic, energetic yeah. dog that needs to be walked for like three hours every day. Right. Um, and so because of this, it doesn't make sense to just have a standard price because right. not only will that not make not apply to a turtle or a cat but it's also not taking into account the different needs of different animals and how much how much time that's going to take and so basically what we're doing is we're going to get a bunch of different factors like um how many walks it needs how many minutes per walk how energetic it is it does it is it potty trained? Does it well, chew we can on show furniture? it and see all the uh, and all these factors. things and basically calculate, um, make a model that calculates the what price. the price should be. And okay. so far, uh, Sue did almost all of this, but um, I learned. Yeah, basically, <laughs> we've calculated learned. the um, per night. Okay, the, we actually haven't finish this yet well you did one okay so that worked pretty well no nah, this one's way too complicated but i can kind of show what i was trying to do okay. basically the main factors was like how many walks a day and how many minutes per walk and then there's also like how much does your dog weigh is it potty trained does it need to be washed does it chew on furniture how energetic it is and basically what i was doing is Taking the um, number of walks times the minutes per walk, which basically is going to give you the total minutes that you need to walk it per day, Mm -hmm. divided by 2 plus 100 divided by the minutes per walk. The reason why I added this part was because if it's just a linear relationship, I found that it was giving a price that was too low for dogs that didn't need that much walking because there's still like the fixed cost of they need to drop off the dog and like it's a kind of a hassle and it's like a dog so yeah you're still taking care of a dog yeah and it still takes a lot of time and so what this basically does is the lower the number is the lower the number of minutes is then the more you're going to add to this because it's 100 divided by like for example let's say if this is like 10 minutes per walk then 100 divided by 10 is 10 um obviously and then if it were to be like 50 minutes per walk then you would only be adding two to your um as like this this cost right here and so um that was kind of my solution that was kind of overly complicated and wasn't um not really intuitive it was kind of like sure you can get a roughly accurate model but you want to make it so that the numbers actually make sense like intuitively and it's um accurate not only in your end product but in the way that you get your end product and so now what we're doing is we're redoing the model so that basically we have these um, yellow ones, which is the raw input data that we're going to get from the client. And then the orange is basically using that input data to um, derive a certain number. In this example, it's we ask them how many walks a day and how many minutes per walk. And then we're going to calculate from that the, um, the minutes that you would be walking it per day. And then it, this red is the walk adjustment which is basically how that is going to influence the price and basically something that was just really simple is basically taking the walks minutes per day and dividing it by five and so if it was only like 30 minutes per day then we would only be adding like six dollars but the thing that was um much more simple to do that that wasn't that was to a base price that wasn't as like complicated and kind of arbitrary as this is just having a base price for each 
dog because that actually makes sense because there is somewhat of a fixed cost to yeah. just having a dog in your life versus not having a dog is no matter how cute and amazing the dog is, <laughs> it's still going to have some amount of like hassle. So this is just a new client base price of $20 per night, but then based on these extra things, then we're going to be adding on top of that. Um, and so we're still working on it. We've only gotten this far, but it's kind of um, you just a much more, uh, I think it's a good kind of learning opportunity for kids to also understand like how you can structure something that is actually accurate in terms of the way that you derive something and not only in the end product, because let's say you, I mean, just for this example, you know, that earlier equation that I created, it was getting kind of the numbers that we expected to see, but it wasn't really in a way that I could explain it to a client that Isla was um, working with and being like, here's how we decided to get the price. Um, and then and then that they would probably just be like really confused and think like this is just kind of arbitrary numbers. I don't know what yeah. I'm looking at. Um, and also one thing I did want to show is um, I also graphed this using this. This is actually something I found out from Khan Academy, this Desmos uh, graphing calculator. It's just desmos.com, D-E-S-M-O-S.com. And this is was my initial graph, which I think was definitely like not very intuitive and didn't really make that much sense. But what it allows you to actually visualize it because you can kind of play around with your calculator and get some sense as to like what the relationship you're looking at is. But I um but then that's also not very but if you can't actually visualize it, it can be hard to really understand what you're looking at. And so that's why I graphed it because I kind of realized that this wasn't uh, very accurate and not really what I would, wanted to look at. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that this is a really good tool, especially if um, you're learning things like in Algebra 1 or um, Algebra 2 and you're learning about linear relationships or parabolas, and um, then you can be looking at these things and actually visualizing the equations that you're creating instead of just thinking like, okay, I'm seeing all these numbers and apparently I'm getting to this solution, but I'm not actually really understanding how this is influencing the data or influencing the, the relationship and what I'm actually doing with my equations. So that's kind of, um, we're still working on that, but that'll be our um, project for this week, or one of our projects for this week. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. I think you guys are doing great. Thank you. It's, uh, that's gonna be really useful. We can also take the data from your clients uh -huh. and then use that to um to improve the model yeah right because you can think about the experiences that you have yeah and also the price point so like some people may not accept the price right they may say ah oh, it seems too expensive and you'll be able to if you have enough clients you'll be able to see where those points are and say well why did we did we miss price like a lot of folks with bigger dogs are saying no Right. You know, so maybe the yeah. parameter associated with bigger dog needs to be tuned down. So you like right. raise the base price a little bit, but then bring the parameter associated with size down a little bit. <coughs> yeah. And right. then because you want to have a like you, you actually want to have some percent of people that that reach out end up not using the service. If everybody's always saying yes, probably means your price is too low. Probably means the price is too low. Yeah. If everybody's saying no. Uh, so probably means the price is too high. And they're saying, like, my dog needs to be walked for, like, four hours a day, and you give them fries, and they're like, no, then it's kind of like, well, you know, I was kind of expecting that because I want to price this appropriately based on the time commitment. Yeah. So it's, uh, so, yeah, that's when, that's when math starts to become data science. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, 
and um, it also gives you an objective way to actually um, adjust the price instead of just kind of like coming up with numbers in your head because that is kind of uh, 27 <laughs> it's not really gonna um, <laughs> be very reasonable for your clients to just kind of like give them arbitrary numbers you know you want to have some way of actually understanding the numbers that you're looking at and where they came from yeah mommy and i were dealing with that with uh with the home buying process right yeah like folks were like oh your site development is going to be this big number and we're like right. where's this coming from yeah yeah where's so your doing spreadsheet things like really and then they sent us the spreadsheet right and then we could see the cells and we're like okay ten thousand dollars to remove bamboo yeah. where's that coming from <sighs> seems like a nice round number Right. Those nice round numbers. Got to watch out yeah. for those. Uh, you know? Yeah. It's actually just really practical things that is that just understanding numbers, even if it's not, you know, these things don't have to be very complicated. Just doing things like dividing the square footage by the price and calculating um, the price per square foot across all these different models that we're looking at. Like that's just a really simple objective measure that is incredibly useful. It doesn't have to be complicated. Um, and so that's also one thing that a lot of people might be thinking about is like a lot of the ways that people apply math is generally with higher level math when you that you see in kind of like the real world uh, with like you know engineering and creating models and stuff. But then there's also a lot of applications just using the fundamental map that kids are learning when they're I mean, when they're kids. You know? <laughs> so Isla, what would you say out of all the math related projects that you've done, what was probably the most fun, easiest to get into for parents that are new to trying to use project based learning for math? The one with the horses. Okay. Where there's like a race and then you what do they to need pick to play? A number. Um, you need two or three dice um, for, and then you can roll like two dice, and then each person could pick a number to like move forward. And so, if you get the number, then you can move forward. Um, How did I set it up visually so it was more fun? Because like younger kids, they like it. Well, you had like a piece Visual. of paper and yeah. then like a racetrack for each um, person. And then there is like a little dot or something you can use as your horse. Right. Sometimes uh -huh. I'd try to find like little figurines. Yeah. Right. Uh -huh. So it's just, you can just do this with a piece of paper. And then you can like write down what happened. And you could even do it on a chess set or oh, like a yeah. checkerboard. And yeah, just associate just the grid. numbers. You just need a grid. It's just of, a grid. Of, uh, I would say probably two dice is better, or else you're going to go, and that's going to be 18 horses. <laughs> and then you can just have, um, then it would just be 12 by like 10. And then for, the, then for the 12, that is for each column is for the horse. And then if you roll a two, then the horse at the, actually, no, it would only be um, 11 because there, you can't get one. And That's right. um, then like if you get a two, then the horse at two would move up one row. And then you can, then at the end, you can like see the normal distribution of where all the horses ended up when the first one reaches the 10th yeah. uh, tenth, the tenth box. I, I would say start with one die. And then go to two and then go to three oh, because yeah. then you're teaching that's when you're you're also teaching distributions but they won't know it until later right um another good one if you have cups or barbies you can do <laughs> the nerf gun game okay. and uh that's really fun too because then you're learning percentages right right yeah and wait I, I didn't understand that one your percent accuracy basically oh. if you were to to try to shoot um, a, a cup, <laughs> a cup yeah. 10 times, a cup. what percent of the time do what you What were you make thinking, Simi? Uh, yeah, no, you're right. shooting There's, cups. Yeah, a cup. So you've got, right, you could even do, you could do points, but I think the accuracy thing is easier. So, and if you don't have a Nerf gun, 
Although, I, if you don't have a Nerf gun, you should probably get one. Yeah. Um, but, like, to just even throwing balls in, like, a, in a hoop, you know? Yeah. Like you, can, you can do this with basketball. Yeah. Um, putting away, like, tossing, yeah, tossing a, even, a, like, a little Nerf ball in a, in a laundry basket. <laughs> you know, or tossing yeah. your clothes into a laundry basket because then you're doing laundry, right? Yeah. Right, or tossing Barbies like out a window. You could do, <laughs> I figure at this point, very few. Yeah. Wow, 80%. Good job. <laughs> okay. anyway. We've already upset the Barbie lovers, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, Sorry. I think you guys did a great job of, <coughs> of sharing different ways to do math based. <coughs> Four things yeah. um and uh we'll be sharing more on this through the week but um if you want to see some of these projects you can go on weekle.app the previous um, math demo day we did is linked in the description cool. <laughs> um also weekle.school has um some of these projects too yeah uh so yeah it's uh weave that math in uh-huh then they'll know like it's been really useful having my daughters be able to share insights about how to look at different homes that we're looking at yeah um because they they know how to communicate in math yeah and you can't do that if all you're doing is deriving equations and uh -huh. solving problems and also one thing i, I want to mention like is just like, made up math problems not real world math problems yeah um uh, one thing that i think is important to mention is like we're not saying that um, drilling math and, you know, just making sure you get through a curriculum to make sure you have all the foundational skills down isn't something that's necessary. I and I do Khan Academy and we do do that, but it is important to alongside that actually be applying what you're doing. So you can at least be thinking about how are these skills that I'm learning potentially like be can can be applied in real world situations and um and actually just being aware that these skills are something that are um used in in many different areas yeah um, it can make your life better yeah it can make your life better and and it's also um, <laughs> and also just being able to see where where it can be applied will also make you just more interested in it. And then because of that, you're just going to have better retention <clears throat> automatically. It's really hard so. to remember the what you're learning in math if you're not using it in real life. Yeah. You're, you're just either you're, you're going to forget it uh -huh. or you're, you're not going to be able to know how to translate it. Yeah. Like, because like a lot ratios, of the, like Sume yeah. was so useful with the house stuff and pointing out all these different ratios we could be using to better understand which home we should buy. That's because she's using math practically to communicate and to solve problems. And a lot of it is actually coming up with the math problem, coming up with the question. Yeah. Because you're in real life, you're not handed these equations to also, just solve. Because if that was the case, you could just use a calculator. Yeah, in real life. With you're not going to be sitting down with a sheet. Yeah. With the through. positive pooch sitting, I had no idea how we're going to even create the model. Like, I at first I was just making like a linear relationship and trying to get um like Bella's number to forty, and then and then I put in like um like the average dog and it was like a hundred dollars per mm -hmm. night <laughs> and so i did i had no idea how i was gonna do that um and, but that's actually coming up with the problem it's not solving the problem yeah and that's what google sheets is really <coughs> useful for yeah because it's not always gonna be that simple so it's just easy to do it in google sheets because they get rid of all the tiny little details Oh, I just remembered another really good example, which was the uh -huh. friend rejection game. Oh, yeah. Remember that? Uh, it was yeah. game theory. We actually have a video on this channel with um, the with the friend rejection game. Video. Yeah, yeah. I won't I won't get into it now because we're looks like we're we're running out of steam here for but um this is a really cool introduction to using Google Sheets. 
Um, and shout out to uh, to Jace who helped to do this. It's his mom's birthday today. Oh, also, um, then Chloe finished her um, blobfish. So, um, yeah, good job, Chloe. Congratulations on finishing your blobfish project. Super cool. Um, so this friend rejection game, uh, it's on this YouTube channel, Week Will School, and um, a bunch of kids are playing it and we got their permission to record it. It doesn't show their faces, it just shows, you can hear their voices, but they're going through and they're deciding every round whether or not to meet another kid who could potentially become their friend. And it's great game because you play every, every round is like another day. It's like you're going out onto the playground or you're going to another play date and you're deciding, okay, do I wanna go out there and take a chance? Because there's, there's a chance that you might get rejected. And I think it was one in six, kind of like rolling a die, one in six chance that for whatever reason, that kid is just, maybe they're having a bad day, but they're just like, you know, I don't want to play with you. Or they say something that really hurts your feelings. And so you lose five utility points per like Sume's uh, other paper where she was using utility functions to try to understand happiness, right? So it's similar to that. Yeah. Um, but if you do make a friend, you get a point, not just that round, but every single round going forward until the end of the game. And the end of the game is kind of like, like it can kind of go on forever. Like eventually you get the point of the game and you stop because, you know, basically you keep playing that game your whole life, right? Yeah. And so it's pretty cool because the way to win the game is to not fear rejection. Yeah. And to go out there every day and try to make another friend because eventually because that's a long-term investment instead of just fear of short-term loss and then if you continue to basically make more and more friends even with occasional um rejection from people that will make you lose utility then all of these long-term investments will add up where you're getting eight points a turn so it doesn't matter if you lose five points from somebody rejecting you because you're just continuing to get more and more points um, from all of these relationships that you've built. Yeah. Yeah. So eventually once you get five friends and you don't even feel it because you got all your friends over there with you. So that negative five points from that rejection doesn't really hold you, doesn't keep you down, you know? So I especially think this is, this is important for homeschoolers because they have to work that much harder when they're trying to find social activities and they're oftentimes meeting new kids because, well, you don't always just have that same class day after day after day. Yeah. And we try to help provide solutions for that. That's a big part of what we do at Weekwell School is building and forming learning pods for families so that kids can have that more consistent peer group. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's a there was it was it was a really good day at Weekwell School. Um, so check out that project uh, if you want. It's on this channel. And um, yeah, we'll be back on Friday. We do this live stream every Monday and Friday at 9 a.m. Eastern uh, with our theme of the week. So the theme of the week is math-based uh, math -based projects. Feel free to join our Facebook group if you want to jump in and brainstorm. Um, we also have uh, some different programs and clubs and other opportunities on weekly.school. Um, you can also form learning pods and just start <coughs> building your digital resume of, of projects um, on weekle.app, uh, which is available on the App Store uh, and on, on the uh, Google Play Store. So, yeah, sorry we're all sick today, but I guess uh, <laughs> but we, we plowed through it, right, Isla? Yep. All right. You guys take care. Bye. Bye.